Any thoughts? Then we'll open up for questions. Well, first of all, it was it was great, just just kind of heartwarming to have him back on the court from knowing what he went through and knowing how scary it was. And I know he uh, appreciated that as well. Uh, I thought our guys played really hard. I thought they played pretty well against a good team. I mean, Temple's good now. Um, and Khalif Wyatt is a special point guard, in my opinion. Um, uh, he reminds me a lot of Mike Green at 6'4", 210. Um, and I know he's, he knows Mike a little bit, but I think uh, certainly that's a really good win against a very good team. Coach, you talked about your move to put, put Rose on the Khalif late in the first half. Well, that was going to happen. The only reason we didn't put him on to start the game was foul trouble. You know, we knew that Khalif has attempted, I think, nine free throws a game in league play. And, um, you can't, we knew that Rose would eventually foul. Um, and, you know, we needed Rose in the game. So we mixed it up a lot in the first half. I thought when Kellen got switched on to him, he did a pretty good job. I thought, it, you know, he took advantage of his size over Barlow a little bit. Um, but, you know, Rose, what Rose was going to guard him the majority of the game once we got past that initial wave where foul trouble couldn't be an issue. Rob, I mean, how good did it just feel to get back out there and do the things that you do? It felt really good. Um, you know, when something like that happens, uh, maybe it puts a lot of things in perspective. And um, I just wanted to be able to get back out there with these guys and, and our coaches and um, coming away with the win was even, was even better. Right. Bobby, when things got a little stagnant for you in the second half, and you're contributing in just another way with the assist game, just talk about how it's a team effort for you. Yeah, well, it's, um, I mean, it's easy to, to get assists when you can throw it up there and the guys just grab it and dunk it in, so <laughs> like, like this guy. But, um, no, I, my teammates did a good job of setting screens that, you know, they were, they were sagging in the paint a little bit. And, and I was able to get by a guy and, and dump it off a couple times, and, and guys made shots too. You know, Kellen hit some big shots. Kyle stepped out and hit some shots, and it was just an all-around team effort. Ronnie, there's a thing about getting back in game shape, and you've always been such a fit athlete. Did you find yourself wearing down, or did, did you feel pretty normal out there during the I, course of the game? I felt pretty normal. Um, the first half, I was I was fine, and um, maybe my legs were a little heavy at the end of the toward the end of the game there, but I felt you know I felt a lot better than what I thought I would. So. I was good. Kudos to Ryan and his staff for keeping, you know, when he couldn't, when he finally got back but couldn't go contact, making sure he was doing things that were basketball specific. Really, really good job by them. Brad, you've addressed this before, but there's a lot of skeptics who think Butler can't beat a great team on a high tempo, high scoring game. And you said a lot about, you know, tempo is sort of irrelevant. It is. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's completely irrelevant. But I think. But one of the things we want to do is be hard to score on. You know, I think the, the, the best way to measure tempo is measure time of possession in a team's game. So who's got the ball? How long does Butler have the ball? How long does our opponent have the ball? And if you really measure time of possession, most of the time we're on the, we're, we're on the short end of that um, when we've been our best defensively. Now, when we're not very good or we're not very in tune transition-wise, then that may change. But uh, we're a better transition team, obviously, with Rodney in the game because of the way Rodney passes the ball, but also the threat of him shooting when he crosses 27 feet or so. Coach, how, how did Rodney's presence like affect you? Because it just seemed like you were in a situation with the floor spread, and I think noticed this before, when that floor gets spread like that, you just have a knack for getting to the rim and having your teammates find you. You know, however, Rodney is like, pretty much, like I said, a blessing out on the floor. Um, with his ability to shoot and his ability to create shots for himself, um, a lot of guys are going to pay a whole lot of attention to him. Like, there are a couple of plays where he'll come off a down screen, two guys will run to him and slips to the basket were wide open. Just the attention that he gets makes makes everything a whole lot easier for us as a team. And with him to eat, still uh, get it done with that much attention is also a blessing on our team. And But I think it also makes it a whole lot easier on our guys. Coach? But when uh, Temple tied the game at 56, you, you guys managed to, to stave off that attack and, and then went on the run of the year. Let me just talk about that. Well, that's 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 a great thing after the game. I mean, it's not fun in it, but it's a great thing after the game because it shows, you know, it shows response, it shows resiliency. It's just like losing on Wednesday. How are you going to respond when you had a chance to win, but you, the other team lays it in on you? A good basketball team in their place. You got to respond. You got to play the next one. You know, we have no time to mope during a game or after a game in this league. It is, it's a, it's a monster every night. And, and now we go to St. Louis, who is uh, playing 
you know, as well as anybody, I think they've won 11 out of 13 and 12 out of 14 and you know, preseason number two or three in the league. So we'll have to be good again. Coach, going on that, uh, not a lot of us understand the quality of the A-10 because we've never seen what the Sal play, for example. But with Sal and Temple combined for 26 wins so far, uh, talk a little bit about what you've learned through five games in this league about this league. Well, and, and, and to both of those programs, they've combined for 26 wins, and they go on the road a lot more than, than even some of the A-10 programs. So I think that you really factor in how good those two teams are. That's why they're top 50 RPI teams. Um, and, uh, you know, it, just game after game, that's the kind of level of team that we're playing. And, and even, the, you know, the teams that were picked even lower or haven't won as many games, they all, most all, have a signature win in this league already on the road. So you got to be ready every single night in this deal. It's, it, it's fun. Shoot, why not? Let's do it. Kyle, what's been the biggest difference uh, between your first two years in the Horizon League and now five games into, into the Atlanta 10? What are you noticing about the differences of the leagues? Um, well, both leagues are very competitive. Um, the Horizon League is definitely a really, really competitive league. Um, just this year, you know, pretty much new cities, new gyms, whole new players, but um, definitely a lot bigger guys. Like their their bigs are six nine, long. Uh, definitely more athletic. Um, I think that's the only difference. I feel like. It's. I, I would second that. I think the Horizon's a great league, and I think when you look at maybe the difference a little bit in the first few games, there's um, the the difference in length. But, but the Horizon would counter that, and we would counter that in the past and still do with the different, you know, with skilled guys. And so we're smaller, strong guys. So it's, you know, good teams are everywhere, and, it, and it's hard to win in any league you're playing. Hey, Rodney, in the first half of 10 turnovers, just four turnovers for the team in the second half. And you yourself, you played an even number of minutes in each half, but you didn't turn it over at all in the second half, and, which is a good thing. But uh, could you put your thumb on it on what was the difference between the halves and Six less turnovers. Um, in the second half, you know, we just slowed down a little bit. And for myself, I, I slowed down. I made a couple of plays in the first half that were, you know, unnecessary. Um, you know, in transition, I threw one up there that was pretty much just giving the ball. And then I made a couple of plays where I turned my back and made a couple of passes that were that weren't very good plays. So I just tried to slow down as much as possible. And um, we executed well in the second half and did some good things. Kyle, yeah, Kyle with one turnover there in the second half, trying to get the ball underneath the Andrew. Uh, Probably a pass you'd like to have back with you. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm over here just kick, uh, kicking myself in the rear on that pass. I mean, he was wide open. I'm just like the best thing. The, the, the best thing you can do is just laugh it off, you know. Um, especially with a big win like this. Like, I'm, I'm glad it's not a fatal turnover. But um, definitely, I wish I could have that pass back. Coach, has anybody zoned you this year? Mm -hmm. Have they? Right, rather than chase Rodney for 38 minutes, I wondered. If you've seen teams just say, screw it, let's play zone and not chase them. Then you give them a sliver of daylight. Now you've got issues. <laughs> so I think <laughs> so. we see zone. Uh, you know, Richmond played switching man when he wasn't playing, which is almost like a zone. Uh, we saw uh, possession of zone today when Temple trapped out of it, and that's when Kyle threw it off Andrew. Um, we'll see a possession or two here or there. We're not seeing near as much as we did last year. Uh, last year was a great, you know, great coaching year for me from the standpoint of learning because we had never played against that much zone. And we got to learn how to play against it. We got pretty good at it. And hopefully we can be better against it with the kind of guys that we have shooting it to stretch the floor as well. Coach, Rodney, Kellen is you hit just the floor a pretty hard early in the game, very, very early. Uh, was it good to kind of get that kind of contact out of the way early? Yeah, honestly, I wasn't going into the game. I wasn't worried about it. I just just going to go out and play the same way I've always played. Um, you know, it was just a, a crazy incident, what happened. So I was just going in with it, with it, it peace of mind, knowing I was going to play the same way. But uh, when I did hit the floor, you know, I felt fine, got right back up, and it was, it was good. Coach, Kellen is just a freshman, so he's, he's learning all the time. But did his growth accelerate at all during Rodney's absence? I, I really believe that that's probably the thing that, that you can say uh, with certainty, that he is he's rising. He's rising. And, um, he's really playing with a great deal of confidence, but he's playing well on both ends of the floor. He's making very sound defensive plays. He's always in the right spot. He's rebounding better, 
and obviously he's shooting better, and it's easy to point those out. But you know, when with Rodney back now, his you know he's, he's probably not going to have the best defender on the floor on him like maybe he would have last year. 